everybody. Thank you for tuning in. I uh, really appreciate all the likes, comments, and subscribes. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Big O. Now I told you I was going to separate Big O into two different episodes. Uh, that is because there's just so much to cover in Big O because you do get that extra card and it's high-low. Uh, and I think it really deserves two different episodes. This episode is episode number 14 of our 20-part series. This is part two of Big O. If you haven't yet, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button. We are at 1.5K subscribers, so I'm super pumped about that. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. After the series is done, we're going to do a total of 20 episodes uh, covering PLO. Again, we're going to get into tournaments. Tournaments are going to be anywhere between two and four episodes by themselves. Uh, I am going to start uploading some live play uh, that I also had, like, for example, this weekend. And, uh, and then afterwards, I'm probably going to uh, do some things that are a little bit different than vloggers. I think I'm going to start interviewing some players as well. I had a couple people suggest that. Uh, people who... I respect in the game the people that I feel uh, have some good ideas of the game and, and I'll just ask them some random questions, you know, what's their biggest pot, what's their biggest win, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So again, uh, we're going to dive into it in just a moment. If you haven't hit the like and subscribe, go ahead and do that. Now that covers all the housekeeping. As you know, with Big O, on the, on the first uh, part of Big O, we applied some principles. So the first principle, a real quick recap, is the 3-3 rule. I cannot stress that enough. If you are playing three cards to Broadway and three cards to a wheel, you're gonna do good in Big O, okay? Uh, if you apply the rest of the principles, you're going to start crushing Big O. But if you've been playing Big O for a while and you haven't quite figured out where your major leaks are, I'm gonna cover two major leaks in this episode. Uh, and if, if you haven't been crushing Big O, my guess is, is you fit in one of those major leak categories. Uh, so bear with me, we're going to cover that in just a second. Zero decisions on the river. If you're playing Big O appropriately, you should have zero decisions on the river. Uh, unless you're deep stacked like $20,000 versus $20,000 in a one 2 game, and even then I still don't like to have any decisions on the river. I'd just rather get it all in on the turn and say, the heck with any decisions on the river. Button principle is still going to apply. Again, if you're on the button, everybody checks, go ahead and bet pot. Keep in mind in Big O, because there are a lot more draws out there, be, expect that more people are going to call you and you have to be okay with that. Bet your draws. I have a little star right here because bet your draws, playing for scoops and pressure kind of all tie into the same thing. Pressure, 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 pressure. If I had to title Big O as anything, the best Big O players that I've ever ran into apply maximum pressure. They, they always have their foot down on the gas pedal. They're always going full speed ahead. Uh, they're either stopping and they're hitting a brick wall or they're, they're going full speed ahead and driving through the big brick wall. If you're an individual who's playing big O and you're calling a lot, you're playing it inappropriately. Uh, the amount of times that you should call should probably be somewhere between 10 and 20% of the time. Uh, the rest of the time you should either be potting it or you should be folding it. Uh, and there should be about a mix between. So about 40%, you know, 35% potting it, 35% folding it, uh, or maybe closer to 40% potting it, 40% folding it, and then 20% of the time calling. That's a high amount of calling range. Uh, I try not to call very much in Big O. I'm usually either potting it or I'm folding. And I will open up my range based on the table. If I find the table is little on the tighter side, I'm going to open up my range and start stretching the limits of that 3-3 principle. So instead of being 3-3 principle, I'm either going to start being a lot more aggressive with one-way hands that are all high. Okay, I covered that last time, something like 10-10 Jack, King, Ace. Uh, that's an all high hand. I'm going to apply a little bit more pressure uh, pre-flop. And if I do flop something that's connected on the flop that plays with the big hand, I'm going to be applying pressure on that as well because if people are, are a little passive or nitty, uh, and a lot of times the, the, the hand is going to brick out and there's only gonna be a high hand. So keep in mind, 40% of the time in big O is only high, 40% of the time. And, and this is a huge leak a lot of players mistake is they're always drawing to the low, but they forget about the high. I don't understand how that happens because there's always a high. It's not like uh, Archie where somebody has a low and there are no trips or better out there, so the low scoops the whole pot. But 
40% of the hand will always be high. So, pressure, pressure, pressure. So here we go. Dive right into it. So here are some big leaks. And again, if you're struggling on big O, uh, you're gonna apply one of these two big leaks. Now, before I get into the big leaks, one quick thing I'll say, because I've had a couple people ask, where do you play big O live, Josh? Uh, you can play it in Best Bet Jacksonville, has big O uh, frequently. Uh, particularly, I've been down there when they have bigger events like WSOP events or WPT events. So Best Bet Jacksonville has it. Uh, you're also gonna find in Texas, a lot of places have it. Uh, and then of course, during the series in Vegas, you're gonna find big O applies there as well. When I start going to casinos, I am gonna start adding the big O list on there just in case anybody does wanna play it. That is a game that I absolutely would rather play than anything else. Um, but let's dive right into it. So one of the biggest leaks, and I've touched up on this already, is being too passive. If you find yourself calling a lot, you are not playing big O appropriately. And I know that might drive some of you nuts because you're like, professor, professor, why should I bet my draws? Well, if you're playing it appropriately, you should have enough equity in the pot that you can pot it, that you can push your draws to the limit. So let's take an example of that. So being too passive, and let's just say you have a hand that's kind of a two-way hand, and let's see what kind of a pressure you can apply, because keep in mind, 40% of the time, it's gonna to go to one person, okay? Or, you know, there could be two people at the same high, obviously, but let's just take a hand, for example, like you have uh, ace, deuce, four, king, 10, okay? So here we're applying the three, three principle. We have three to Broadway, three to a wheel. And let's just say, for example, the board is three, six, nine, jack. And, you know, obviously, let's just say there's one suit out there, uh, like you've got heart, heart, and then this is like club and diamond. Okay, so somebody is drawing to hearts. And you can even say you have a, a, a bad heart draw, like deuce four of hearts, or you could say you have no heart draw at all. If you look at this hand right here, now obviously this is a no, what we call a no bust nut low draw. What a no bust nut low draw means is any low comes out that doesn't pair the board, you're guaranteed to get half the pot. So any ace, any deuce, any four, it's not gonna counterfeit you. You're still gonna have the not low. So what we need to do is figure out what our outs are. Obviously there's three aces left in the deck. There's three deuces left in the deck, okay? Uh, there's three fours left in the deck. And then we go, so those are all gonna give you not lows. Uh, and then there's four sevens left in the deck and then four eights left in the deck. All of those are gonna give you not lows. Now you do have to be uh, cautious of being quartered, which I'll get into that in a little bit, but if you're not being passive, there are gonna be times where you're just gonna get quartered and you just have to be okay with that, okay? But this is to, to get half of the pot. Just on half of the pot, you're looking at eight plus uh, nine, you're looking at 17 outs for half the pot, okay? in that situation. And then let's look at the amount of outs you have to scoop the whole thing to win the whole pot, okay? In this situation right here, uh, a five, there's four fives left in the deck. This is to scoop. So this is for half, right? And then you have a queen, which is four outs, or, or pardon me, queen over here, and there's four of those. So you have nine outs for all of the pot, all right? So if you factor in what's your equity, well, nine times two, because we're on the turn, use the equity principle, easy math. I try to keep everything as easy as possible. Again, uh, if, you, if the turn's already out there, you just multiply the number by two, that's how you figure out your equity. So nine outs to scoop the pot. So 18% of the time, approximately, you're gonna get the whole pot, okay? Or you're gonna get three quarters. 17 outs to get half the pot. So 34% of the time, you're gonna get half a pot. So when you look at that, you say, wow, there's a 50% chance that you're gonna get a piece of this pot. So for example, if the pot's got $500 in it and you bet 500 and you get called 500, okay? You're betting 500, 34% of the time, you're gonna get back 750, 34% of the time. The other 18% of the time, you're gonna get presumably 1500. 
So when you bet 500 into a $500 pot, you are playing it appropriately. Now, if you're playing passive and you decide to check, you can check call. Uh, that's perfectly fine. I don't approve of that. I think if you have a hand like this, this is something that you need to just pot on. And, uh, and when you're trying to figure out the odds, it's okay to take your time and bet because in bingo, you do have a high and you do have a low. Now this doesn't factor if you have a heart draw. If you have none hearts here, then you've got even more outs to scoop the whole pot. So instead of going from 18%, you get a lot more. And here's the other thing you have to factor. And this is something that a lot of people don't factor in because I can't tell you how many times one pair of hands have scooped half the pot, okay? If an ace comes, okay, you still have the not low with the deuce four and your ace king could play for half the pot. You gotta factor, some people when they're playing big O, they're going for one way pots. Uh, so they might have something like, if your opponent has something like ace, deuce, uh, what are we looking at? Uh, let's say they have ace, deuce, uh, five, seven, eight, okay? This is a hand that's pretty good. Again, this is only drawing to, most of the time to one-way hands. Now, they do have a, a middle wrap there, even though most of their outs are taken, and that's something that you have to factor in big O, is, yeah, if you do hit your four, if you do hit your five, if you do hit your seven or your eight or your ten, you do have a high hand, but you got to keep in mind somebody else probably has the same low, so you're hoping at best you get three quarters, and many times you yourself are going to get quartered. But if you're up against a hand like this and an ace hits the river, well, guess what? Now all of a sudden you get the whole pot because you have an ace, deuce, four, the deuce, four is going to play versus the deuce, five, uh, and your one pair of aces is going to play, okay? So in this situation, uh, you know, if the board's three, six, nine, jack with one suit, if your opponent is deep and you're deep and you bet 500 and your opponent calls and it's 1,500 on the river, if it does brick out, and you're on the button if you have position. Uh, when in doubt, pot it out. That's one of the things I like to tell my students. When in doubt, pot it out. So if the if the river comes a three, a six, a nine, or a jack, maybe a king you can check back. But even if it comes a ten, uh, a ten or a king, I'm probably going to end up potting it on the river uh, if if we haven't gotten it all in yet. And uh, again, that's just applying maximum pressure because you have to figure what is my opponent calling here with. If it bricks out and it's a king of clubs on the river and you have ace king, you have enough showdown. But if it's something like the ten of clubs and your opponent checks to you, they're basically signifying, I don't have anything that's worth calling a pot size bet on the river, uh, bet pot. And here's the other thing. Your bet size still applies in big O. So it's one of those things where if there's 1,500 in the, on the river, you don't want to bet 500 to bluff at it, okay? You either want to bet like 500 to value bet it uh, or you want to bet pot to value bet it if you feel like your opponent might have a set. Uh, or you want to bet pot because you're like, I completely missed. I have nothing. I'm hoping you just fold. And that's the appropriate play. But being too passive is going to be a huge leak. If you've been losing in big O or if you've been struggling with big O, being too passive uh, is definitely one of the major leaks that big O players have. And it's probably one of the reasons why if I had to guess, one of the reasons why um, uh, I love Big O so much is because so many people in Big O will wait until they have the nuts. They'll wait until they have the nut with the nut redraw. Now, the other week, playing one-way hands, okay? Playing one-way hands. When I say that, I mean specifically low. Specifically low. So... These are the type of hands where you look at it and uh, initially it looks really good, but in reality, when you figure out 40% of the time, you're just never going to have a low. Think about that for a second. 40% of the time, there's gonna be no low. So if you look down at a hand like ace, deuce, three, six, eight, I'm going to be playing this hand. I'm not saying fold this hand. That would be insane, okay? But I am going to really like this hand if my ace is suited, like for example, with the six or eight. So a suited ace, I'm still playing, okay? Because again, that principle still applies because 
Forty percent of the time, uh, 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 are, there's going to be just a high, okay? But if you think about this for a minute and you say, well, Professor, 40% of the time there's only a one-way pot. How much should I be ramming and jamming with this pre-flop? Again, I play everything ultra aggressive so that way when I have hands like this or super nutted hands, people can't read me. But in gen generally speaking, ace, deuce, three, six, eight is not a hand. I would prefer, I would prefer ace, four, five, queen, king or ace, four, five, ten, queen. Uh, in some situations, I'd even prefer ace, four, five, jack, jack. Uh, I don't like nine, nine in big O, obviously, because, yeah, it's like the sliver of where you have the high margin. But in a situation like this, I would much rather have jack, jack, ace. That pin's done. Jack, jack, ace, ace, deuce, four over ace, deuce, three, six, eight. Keep in mind, 40% of the time, there's not going to be a low. So all these ace, deuce, three combinations are not going to apply four out of 10 times. Okay, that doesn't mean don't play them. It just means ace, deuce, four, jack, jack, or even ace, four, five, jack, jack, uh, I would rather have than ace, deuce, three, six, eight. And I know I'm going to get some flack for that. There might be some people who are like, I can't listen to anything you say on big O. If you say you'd rather have jack, jack, ace, four, five. Well, keep in mind, jack, jack, ace, four, five uh, is a pretty easy hand that you know you're either drawing to it or you're not, and it's easy to pitch. Okay, because if the board does come up, deuce three X or ace three X, something to that effect, uh, you know you can either run with it or you can get rid of it. Or if the flop comes jack, jack four five, uh, uh, I like that hand. Um, well, not when you have your own blockers, but if it's like jack three six, I like that hand because again, you're drawing to the low, you have a nut, uh, nut high is what you're holding on to. And keep in mind, Four out of 10 times, there's not gonna be a low. This is one of the most under, under misunderstood things in big O is four out of 10 times, there is no low, okay? Uh, I was playing with a guy from New York, I can't remember what his name was, but I can't remember what he said. I think he said, uh, counterfeit the low or, or, or kill the low. Kill the low is what he kept saying. Kill the low, kill the low. And if he's watching today, thank you. I like that saying, kill the low in big O. It was, it was pretty funny. But right now, if you're playing big O and you're losing, you, you have one of these two leaks. I guarantee you that uh, if you've been playing long enough. You're either being too passive where you're waiting until you have the nut uh, or you're playing one-way hands. And I say specifically low, but I will tell you, there have been a couple examples and I'll get into just one quick example. I was playing in uh, Texas. This was during COVID because of course that was the only place you could play in Texas where an individual is specifically playing one hand and uh, uh, we, we, we got into it a lot. He, he loved playing aggressive, which was good, but he also had a big leak where he was only playing one way hands. And uh, for example, there is a hand that was three, six, jack with two clubs. Okay. This was the board and it was a good amount of action. Uh, and I ended up free rolling him. If you're not familiar with the term free roll, free roll means you're guaranteed half the pot and you have a bunch of outs to hit the whole pot to scoop the whole thing. So three, six, Jack with two clubs. I had deuce, four, five, uh, deuce, four, five, uh, seven, eight with clubs. And they weren't strong clubs, but on the flop, uh, he ends up betting pot. I end up calling, uh, this individual and I kept going back and forth. He was actually one of the most fun big O players to play with, uh, particularly because we kept going back and forth. But in any case, the turn put out an ace, no clubs. So in this situation right here, I have them guaranteed half the pot. Any deuce, any four, any five comes up. I'm, you know, I'm already getting half the pot, but if a deuce of four, a five, or a seven comes up, I'm scooping, I'm getting uh, the high as well. And if any club comes up, I'm getting the high. Well, when the ace comes up, he checks, I bet pot. Ace is literally my gen card. He check raises me. We go, we have $7,000 in the pot. So it was about $3,500 in each way. And he turned over ace, ace, king, queen, jack, which again, I like this hand pre-flop on a board that's three, six, jack. Uh, I'm okay with it. When the turn comes out an ace, I'm probably slowing down because half the pot was just lost. And he did not have any clubs. And before the river came out, I said, hey, I said, we've been playing for a few days back to back to back at, at TCH. And I turned over my whole hand. I said, I just want to see you sweat. And he looks at me and he goes, oh my God, you've got more than half the deck to take the whole thing. 
And I was like, yeah, I'm aware. And it broke down and the Queen of Diamonds hit the river. But you're gonna have that happen sometimes. But in any case, again, big O, pressure, 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 pressure. If you're playing big O appropriately, doesn't matter what your initial buy-in is, uh, you can buy in for 500 if the cap's 500. Uh, within an hour, you should have that $500 committed into a hand uh, or you're not playing it appropriately. Even though Big O takes a little bit longer, if you have a good dealer, you should be able to get in some good hands. But yes, pressure, pressure, pressure. Try not to be passive when you're playing Big O. Try applying maximum pressure. You should be able to run it up quite a bit. If you are playing deep in Big O, again, all of these principles are still gonna apply right here. Uh, there's gonna be many times if you're playing at a really good Big O game where people are gonna be potting it, you should be potting it quite a bit. Again, your, your pot and frequency range, about 40% of the time you should be potting it, 40% of the time you should be folding it, maybe one out of five times you should be calling, uh, and things of that nature. So that about covers it for here. Again, if you haven't, hit the like and subscribe. I appreciate everybody watching this. Keep the comments coming in. Uh, I'll be posting uh, some of the live video that I had from Green Bay, even though I couldn't record at the game. And uh, as we progress, I'm gonna keep posting live videos uh, as I do them. So as always, everybody, thank you so much and play smart and run like a god.